Hello friends, Eli Hibbett here with the Pwn Your Homework Physics Series Podcast. If you're looking to prepare, review, or gain an added edge or point of view about topics in physics, then look no further. Tune in each week to unlock your understanding of the physical world surrounding us. And now, let's dive right in. Hey, how is everybody feeling today? I am your host, Eli Hibbett, back at you again with another episode of the Pwn Your Homework Physics Series Podcast. And today... Do we have an episode for you? We have episode number 71, the cross product in two and three dimensions, something I have been, I guess, kind of teasing for about two months now. But uh, yeah, no episode last week, ran into a couple of hiccups and uh, didn't happen. So anyways, we are back on schedule. The tracks have been realigned. The emergency glass, which was broken, has been put back where it's supposed to be. And uh, we're jamming. Uh, Long Island, New York. We got a gorgeous autumn day. Blue skies abounding. Leaves are changing. And uh, tonight, if you look in the sky, you're going to see a 6% illumination waxing crescent moon. The next new moon is in 26 days, and the next full moon is in 11 days. And that is courtesy of the uh, the old moon app that I, uh, I downloaded from the app store, which I didn't make. But uh, I also have a moon phases app if you're into... Th- exploring the uh, the phases of the moon, be sure to check it out. Flashcard review, anything that you'd want. So there we go. But let's dig into the uh, the real, you know, the meat of the episode here. So last time we went through the determinant, and I don't know why. I, I had some sort of mental aversion to digging into the, uh, the actual cross product here, but we're going to do it today. We're going to take it on the teeth and get into it. it it's such a non-intuitive thing the cross product but once you do it once you learn the process it's, it's not bad it's just something you got to do and get done so you can move on with your life so you know it's all like the dot product uh the vector cross product is another means of vector multiplication but the difference is that the cross product gives a vector quantity whereas this the uh dot product gives a scalar cr- quantity um it's one of those things that I don't know if you're going to use incredibly often in introductory physics, but when you need it, it's a very handy tool, and you have to be able to do it accurately because it's a lot of steps, and they have to all be done, you know, dead on, or else your answer is totally wrong. So I'm going to give you five steps on how to do it in two dimensions and six steps on how to do it in three dimensions. So here we go. In two dimensions, if we have our two vectors, you know, AX and AY, and BX and BY, so vector A has components AX and AY, and vector B has components BX and BY, and we're we're assuming that, you know, we're in two, you know, X and Y axis here. To calculate the cross product of these two vectors, you multiply AX times BY, multiply AY times BX, and subtract step two from step three, aka AX times BY minus the quantity AY times BX. Place a K hat at the end and box your answer because you're done. Um, So a K hat is a unit vector which points in the Z direction. So a unit vector is a a vector of length 1. And if the unit vector points in the direction of the X axis, we call that uh, I hat vector. And in the point, in, in point in the positive y direction, we call it the j hat vector. And if, you multiple, if it's pointing in the positive z axis direction, we call it a k hat vector. And so this is very useful because it, when you multiply something by this unit vector, it gives you the component in that direction. And so um, we're going to get into this a little bit. I think next episode we're going to kind of go through this right-hand rule business in terms of cross products. Um, but what we have is um, if you have two vectors that you're crossing in that are both in the XY plane, your vector is going to be pointing uh, in the Z direction, either positive or negative, depending on how the uh, how the vectors line up. But that's all included in, uh, in this multiplication. So that's how you do it in, the, in 2D. So if you wanted to just... If you wanted to give your answer in three dimensions, you would have a bracket for your 
denoting vectors, and you would have a 0, comma, 0, comma, ax times by minus ay times bx. And you could actually, you know, write it that way to let your professor or whoever know that you're actually dealing with a vector. So, did you catch in there, you know, where the determinant came in? This ax times by minus ay times bx is... Uh, determinant. We're actually calculating the determinant of these two vectors, and it's pointing in the k-hat direction. So that's how you do it in two dimensions. And in three dimensions, very similar, but we have to uh, do a lot more calculations. So let's identify our two vectors in the coordinate system, ax, ay, and az. That's vector a with those three components, and vector bx, by, bz is going to be our vector b with those three components. And so what we calculate, step number two, we're going to calculate the i hat, or the x component of this new vector, which is going to be ay times bz minus by times az. And then that whole thing is going to be multiplied by i hat. Step number three, calculate az times bx minus ax times bz times j hat. That's going to be the y component. Step number four, calculate ax times by minus ay times bx. And that gives us our z component. That's multiplied by k hat, of course. And so then we got to write our vector as a vector consisting of the last three steps. So a vector, you know, open bracket. Step two, step th step two, comma step three, comma step four, and uh, just put whatever you calculated there, and then uh, box your answer, and you're done. So your vector will actually be. Ay times Bz minus By, BY times Az, comma, Az times Bx minus Ax times Bz, comma, Ax times By minus Ay times Bx. And that's your X, Y, and Z components. And so that is the, the full-on determinant, the 3x3 three three matrix. First uh, row is I hat, J hat, K hat, or our X, Y, Z uh, components, then vector number one, vector number two, and there you have it. So that's a full-on three by three matrix determinant for you. Uh, so yeah, so that's the general way to calculate a cross product with vectors in Cartesian coordinates. The, the process is not very different in polar or spherical coordinates, but you do have to do a little bit of multiplication by some sines and cosines of theta that are always going to be in specific slots in your matrix no matter what. But that is another story for another day. Um, so yeah, I think next time we're going to get into the right-hand rule and show you how to calculate the direction without knowing anything else other than the just seeing two vectors on a piece of paper, you can actually calculate the direction that the uh, cross product will point in because the cross product always points per perpendicular to the two vectors you're crossing together via the right-hand rule. And uh, then we're going to get into a couple examples. Uh, if, you know, performing examples in a physical setting, you know, this is kind of just the boring math side of it. Not that math is boring, but it's very theoretical. You're not really seeing it in action. Right now, you're just multiplying components together, and it's kind of understanding those steps. Once we, you know, if you learn that, you know, torque is F cross D, you know, you're going to say, okay, now I understand. So I have my force vector, my, my displacement vector, and uh, we're going to do some cross products. We're going to see how our torque is pointing. You know, it's all very, um, it, it, it clears things up very, very easily. So... That's kind of where we're going now that we got the cross product under our belts. We'll be going towards the right-hand rule. Then we'll go through a couple examples. And then we're going to wrap it up. So there we go. Hope your uh, semester's going well. A couple of things. If, you, uh, if you're in kinematics or force right now, I do have two apps that help out with that. A kinematics checklist app that helps you kind of cross off values that you solve for and kind of reveals to you which equation to use next. And uh, a force app, which goes through steps to solve any free body diagram problem four examples and a great flashcard review so if you're interested in those things check out the blog pwnyourhw.blogspot.com pull in your homework or uh, check out the twitter feed at pwnphysics and we'll be links there of course in the show notes and uh there they are sitting on the app store for your help if you are you know, deep in kinematics or free body diagram distress. <laughs> so, 
there we go. And uh, I think we'll be on schedule for another Tuesday release next week. No promises, of course, but uh, it's looking good. So until then, stay frosty, stay in the zone, and I'll catch you next time, guys. Take care.